I am Jordan Coronado, and I'll give you a little bit of background about myself. So I got my Bachelor of Science degree um, from NAU, and then I came back here and got my doctorate degree in physical therapy from Midwestern University. Currently, I'm working at an outpatient physical therapy clinic called Landmark Physical Therapy. So outpatient physical therapy, we see a variety of ailments. So it could be just a simple strain or muscle spasm all the way to post-surgical. And we see a variety of ages. I could see someone eight years old and someone 80 years old. So we see it all. So today I'd like to go over these things with you and really hit home these points. So to have a general understanding of common injuries. So I want you to understand what they are and also how to treat them. I want you to be able to perform lifting and carrying techniques with proper form and I'll teach you that. I want you to be able to position yourself at your desk or when you're standing so that way it reduces any strain or and reduces risk of injury for you. And I would like you to be able to perform the exercises that I'm going to show you because those are going to be your treatment for uh, exercise. Those are going to be your treatment for injuries, okay, and they will prevent injuries from occurring. So moving on. So the physical demands of your profession as professional organizers are that you can carry and lift 50 pounds, that you can climb stairs, and that you can use a step ladder. But I'm also aware that you do a lot of um, different techniques of bending, lifting, carrying, squatting, and stooping. So that's why I want to go over those mechanics with you today to prevent any injuries. So, Put out by the U.S. Department of Commerce, the most disabling accidents that happen in the workplace, and disabling meaning it puts you out of work, you're not able to perform those, your job anymore. So the number one is falls, okay, that's very common in the workplace. So you want to be aware of that and change your environment to make it easier on yourself and to reduce your risk of injury. So you want to make sure that your pathways are clear, you want to make sure that whatever you're carrying doesn't obscure your vision and make you trip and fall, okay? Now number two is overexertion. So with that you can think of lifting something, maybe you're lifting a box or something like that and you strain your back, okay? And then that puts you out of work. Number three would be falling objects. So possibly an object falling on yourself or you go to catch an object, object and then striking against an object and lastly being caught in between objects. So always be aware of your environment, that way you're not going to be injured. So let's move on to just some general anatomy so that you have an overall understanding. So we have muscles, tendons, and ligaments. So those are our three most common tissues in our body as far as the body parts. So if you think about your muscles are the big meaty part and then on either end of that you have a tendon which connects to the bone. Now at the joint you have ligaments which connect bone to bone. So as far as injuries that happen with those we have spasms, sprains, strains, and tendonitis. So for spasms, you would expect this to be in a muscle because muscle is contractile. So what happens is when there is a spasm, the muscle contracts and holds in that position. And it's not able to lengthen like it would normally. So to treat this, you would want to ice for the first 24 to 48 hours. And then after that, you could alternate the ice and the heat. You'd also want to do some light stretching, but you don't want to overly stretch and you would also like to do some rest, just relaxation to let that muscle calm down. So next we have sprains and strains. So the difference between those sprains are ligaments and strains are usually tendon or muscle. But you don't really need to worry about that. Um, that's more for the medical professional. What you need to know is how to treat it. So say you rolled your ankle and that could either be a sprain or a strain. But you know to treat it by using the acronym RICE. So RICE means rest, ice, compression, and elevation. 
So you're gonna rest, you're gonna take some weight off, maybe use some crutches so that that way you're not putting the weight through you that ankle anymore. You wanna ice it, and again, that first um, 24 to 48 hours is critical in the ice and the inflammation reduction. You wanna use compression, so you could just use an ACE bandage, wrap that up, and that will provide enough compression to the area. And then you will elevate that body part so with the ankle, we want to elevate it above the heart because gravity will just naturally pull all that inflammation down back into the body and it'll be recirculated, okay? So use the acronym RICE for the sprains and strains and that'll really help. Lastly, we have tendonitis. So tendonitis, you can guess, it, um, is, it affects the tendon. So it's when the tendon gets rubbed over the bone from repetitive activity. And what happens is, whenever you are constantly moving something, right, if I were to rub my hand on this table here, eventually it would create heat and friction, which creates inflammation. So what you wanna do is stop that repetitive activity that's causing you that pain. So maybe that could mean changing your workspace or something like that. So stop that activity you can use that ice again um, for the first 24 to 48 hours and then alternate the ice and the heat after that. You can also use compression. A lot of times they have bands that go on. A lot of people tend to get tendonitis in their elbow and you may be seeing these bands that go around here and take the pressure off of those tendons. So that's how to treat all of those different uh, common injuries in the acute sense. Now, a few weeks afterwards, that's when you want to start doing the strengthening so that you prevent the injury from occurring again. And that's when you need to talk to your, you really need to talk to your physical therapist about what exercises would benefit you specifically for your injury. Um, and they can also help you in the acute care sense too. So if you are having um, an injury, you really want to go and talk to them as soon as possible so that that way you're going to get the best treatment and it's really going to help you and make you maybe not out of work for as long. All right, so let's move on. So another thing that we need to be aware of is it's summer right now, it's hot, and you want to be aware of getting overly heated. So we're talking heat exhaustion and possibly even heat stroke. So heat stroke is just an exacerbation or a progression of heat exhaustion. Okay, so Knowing the signs and symptoms of heat stroke can help you to um, cool down and reduce uh, any further damage that's happening to you. And also it's good to be aware of when you're in a team because you can recognize, recognize those signs and symptoms in someone else and get the medical help that they need as well. So if you're having any nausea, nausea, dizziness, vomiting, anything like that, if you are feeling woozy, um, those are all signs and symptoms that you may be overheated. And the best way to stay, um, to not get overheated is by staying hydrated. So what you want to do is you think about your body weight, okay? And you're going to divide that in half, and that's how many ounces of water you should drink a day. So say you are 150 pounds, you're going to divide that in half, that's 75 ounces of water per day. So you think about your average water bottle or something like that, and you just multiply that until you get to your average, until you get to your, um, how many ounces per day you need based on your body weight. So another thing that we need to be aware of for you as professional organizers are concussions. Because you're having to get in these awkward spaces, maybe an attic or something like that, you have the uh, potential to hit your head. So for concussions, there's going to be four main components. So cognitively, you may have difficulty thinking clearly, you may feel slowed down, having trouble remembering new information, or difficulty concentrating. Now physically, you might have a headache, again, nausea, vomiting, sensitivity to light, sound, all those things um, would tell you that physically there may be something wrong and you need to get it addressed. Emotionally, you may be more irritable, more emotional, nervous or anxious. 
And then lastly, sleep, you could be sleeping more or less depending on the person. So if you're having these signs and symptoms and you hit your head, be aware that you may have a concussion. And the more signs and symptoms that you're having, the more severe that it could possibly be. Now, if you want to prevent that, you could do that by using a hard hat um, because it's going to protect you. Um, because we know that you have the potential to run into that risk. So other PPEs. So PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment. So it's going to protect you against uh, your environment. So a hard hat would be an example to protect your head when you're in that awkward space. Next would be gloves. So you can wear gloves to prevent any paper cuts and um, to prevent any splinters if you're doing any more hard work. You can wear a mask and that might help you when you're in an environment that has a lot of particles in the, in the air. And last are shoes. So let's talk in about footwear. So I, for footwear, I generally like an athletic shoe for you because what you're doing is very active. You're on your feet, you're moving around, and those are going to be the best for you. Closed-toed shoes are a must because you have the potential to drop something on your foot or to step on something. Um, I like laced shoes because they're going to provide support on either side of your foot and it's going to help to keep your arch up, especially when you've been standing on your feet for a while. An orthotic is, is also a good thing for you because it's going to help to keep your arch up when you're standing on your feet for a long time. And lastly, make sure that they're non-slip so that, that way you don't fall, like remember, falls were our number one workplace injury, our most disabling injury as well. So make sure that you get the non-slip. So let's get into proper positioning. So the reason why this is so important is because for your job, it puts certain demands on your body. So when you are doing a lot of lifting or something like that, it's going to make you overly use these muscles here, okay? And that's going to make your shoulders close down. And we call this upper cross syndrome, okay? And so what you want to do is open up your chest and strengthen the muscles on the backs of your shoulders so that that way you're in better balance. And, and now something similar that happens is in your lower body, and that's called lower cross syndrome. So this is just another muscle imbalance that happens from the activities that are being placed on you. So when you're doing a lot of sitting or standing, then our back will tend to get tight as well as our hip flexors. So I'll show you some exercises later on where we will address those. Also, you want to make sure that you're strengthening your abdominals and your glutes just to put you back into that balance. So for sitting posture, you want to keep your, your back aligned. You don't want to be overly arched or slumped. You want to find that neutral ground, okay? Your hips and your knees need to be at 90 degrees. At the top of your screen should be at eye level. Most people who have laptops, you know, that's a little bit difficult because the screen is all the way down. So getting, um, getting like a riser or something like that can help to bring the top of the screen up. We want your elbows to be at 90 degrees, so you might have to get an external heart or external keyboard if, you are, um, if you're working on a laptop, so that way you have the screen up and also your elbows at 90 degrees. You also want everything to be close to you, so bring everything in, so that way you're not going forward because that's going to put you in this forward head posture and cause all this tightness in your shoulders, okay? So you want to be upright. And then you also want everything to be brought in. So you don't want to be reaching to the side because that's what can cause a tendonitis in your elbow. Again, you want your, key, your keyboard to be flat. So that way it's not tilted or down. Um, so that, that prevents any carpal tunnel. So for a standing posture, it's very similar to sitting. We always want to be aligned in our spine. So we don't want to be overly arched and we don't want to be slumped. You want to find that neutral ground, okay? So if we're working at a standing desk, again, same rules apply. You want the top of the screen up, at eye level, elbows at 90 degrees. You can either go hips, 
hip width apart on your legs. You could bring one leg forward and one leg back. The most important thing though is that you're not doing this. Because what does that do? That puts my hip over to the side and that puts my hip at risk here of getting a bursitis or something like that. So you want to keep your weight over your feet. Moving on to body mechanics. So bending, lifting, and carrying. The most important thing about these is that you use your legs to perform these activities. So you do not want to do this. So this right here is putting so much strain on my back. I'm leaning forward and with my legs straight and is creating a lot of strain on my back. Instead, what you'd want to do is to stagger your feet. Now put a little bend in your hips and your knees and do you feel how much tension that takes off your low back. Again, you always want your back to be straight and in neutral position. And now I can unpack things, I can pack things from this position and my back's not hurting, okay? Now for lifting something, same rules apply. You could do a staggered stance or you could do, uh, you could put them at the same uh, level here, just maybe a little bit wider than your hips as you reach down and pick something up. Always want to keep it close to the chest. You don't want to have it far away from you, okay? So keep it in close. As you're lifting it and placing it back down, you want to use your legs and keep your back straight. You could also do a lunge position. So you could get into a lunge position like this in order to bend and pick something up. Lastly, the, another uh, technique that you could use is called a golfer's pickup. So think of a golfer picking up his ball or a tee. What you're going to do is you're going to kick a leg back, bend down, and pick that up. What that does is it counterbalances you, and so that way it does not put as much strain through your back. And again, we use the legs for that. So one of the biggest points that I want you to get out of my presentation today is not to twist through your back because this is the number one way that it can cause a disc herniation. So if my legs are planted and I'm reaching across and I'm rotating like this, do you see how much of that force is going through my back? So that's how you would cause that disc herniation. To prevent that, this is what you would do instead. You would grab that object and you would pivot this way. So that way you're using your legs as opposed to your back to perform that. And that will save you so much if you just do that simple thing. So another common injury is a foosh. And a foosh is a medical term meaning fall on an outstretched hand. That means that you fall and you put your arms out and what happens is your wrist breaks. What you want to do instead is you want to try to tuck in maybe hit on the meatier parts of your body, so your arm here, and rotate if you can. And Foosh, remember, fall on an outstretched hand to prevent uh, wrist fracture or wrist injury. So types of exercise, we have resistance and strengthening exercises, stretching and cardio. So for, for resistance and strengthening, you may need to do this when you're feeling like you can't pick something up or you're having trouble getting off the floor. Okay, that means that you need to be doing strengthening exercises to give you the strength to do that activity. For stretching, um, if you're doing a lot of, uh, if you're in one position for a long time, then that can cause your muscles to get tight. So a lot of sitting can cause the tightness in the hip flexors, so you want to stretch those, and we'll go over that. So for cardio, you may need this if you're feeling fatigued and after two or three hours, you're ready to, you're tired and you want to sit down. It'll really help your endurance if you are doing cardio outside of your work. So let's get into those exercises. So the first one is a seated exercise for your lumbar region to stretch out your lumbar paraspinal muscles. So remember, these are the ones that get tight when we're sitting or standing for a long time. Okay, so you want to sit in the chair. You'll place your hands on either side of the table. And you're just going to lean forward. Okay, and that's going to stretch out your back. Okay, and then come back up. So you'll hold that for about 5 to 10 seconds and do about 5 to 10 reps of those. 
okay? The most important thing is that your hands are being supported by the table. I don't like freely stretching, just forwardly flexing, because you're actually using your back to hold you up, so you're not really going to get as much of a stretch as when you are being supported. Another exercise is called the pec stretch, and why we want to do this one is because of how tight you get in here from doing any of your daily activities, because everything that we do is forward, so whether we are cooking or cleaning or lifting, everything is here, Okay, nothing is going on back there, so we got to stretch this out. So you'll put your hands on either side, and you want your of a doorway or a corner, and you want your elbows and your hands to be on the wall, and then lean forward. Okay, so you should feel that only in the front. Okay, your pecs and your biceps. I don't want you to feel anything on the back side. If you are, then stop and let me know. Okay. So for that one, you would want to hold for about 30 seconds and perform three repetitions. So always with stretches, we want to hold for a longer amount of time and do less reps. So that would also include the hip flexor stretch. So for the hip flexor stretch, what you want to do is you want to be in a lunge position, okay? And you want to shift your hips forward. You want to keep your body upright here. You don't want to be here okay because then you won't feel anything if you're this way and you're going to stretch out through here and you want to hold this for 30 seconds and do about three reps of those on each leg and that feels so good after sitting for a while <laughs> i think i need to do that one all right and then lastly you're going to be lying on your side and this is going to work your glute muscles okay and you're going to lift your leg up so the most important thing about this one is that you keep your hip forward, okay? So maybe doing it against the wall would be a good thing because it keeps you in alignment. So you're going to raise and lower that top leg up and do that 20 times, keeping the leg straight, keeping your leg against the wall.